So my first book, International Jewish Humanitarianism in the Age of the Great War, was published in the Human Rights and History series of Cambridge University Press in June. And it tells the story mainly of American Jews who took part in the American overseas humanitarian effort during the First World War. The main Jewish humanitarian organization involved in this effort was called the JDC. So I tried to pick a favorite passage of my book that was close to page 99. Um, and so instead, I chose page 120 to 121. And I'm going to read a little bit from the book. Um, and this page comes towards the beginning of my chapter on refugee relief. And the quotation you'll hear of Boris Bogan um, was the JDC director in Europe and a social worker by training is perhaps one of the most memorable quotations in my book. So let me read. Even as refugee emergencies continued throughout the 1920s, the budget for refugees shrank. The refugee department was born out of a contradiction that responding to Jewish refugees was the most important issue that only JDC could address, but also that refugees posed such an immense, cognizable issue that there would be no funding. In this way, the refugee situation was not unlike the bewildering, disastrous problem of suckering Jews in Soviet Ukraine. Bogan declared with unnerving foresight at Vienna, I think that the great task before us, or the problem that will loom up all over the world, will be the problem of refugees. The JDC Refugee Department evolved into having two primary interrelated functions. The first was to conduct short-term emergency relief to keep desperate refugees alive in crisis situations, responding to the crisis moment of displacement wherever it occurred. The second was to enroute refugees as quickly as possible to convert desperate refugees into local residents wherever they were, or at least to give them the trappings, appearance, and relationships of a local resident. Still, taken as a whole, despite efforts to make refugee relief temporary, crises kept appearing in new places, in new places, and new violence erupted. Jewish refugee relief was interminable and unrelenting. The refugee department developed into an emergency department, an arena where emergency was routinized and accepted as a long-term phenomenon, while other aspects of the refugee problem were left to other organizations. So my book is not about the Holocaust. Its time span covers 1914 to 1929. And I specifically avoided reading and using too much material on the Holocaust because I wanted to write this history not as a precursor to the Holocaust, but on its own terms. But it was impossible for me to avoid the knowledge of, of the Holocaust or indeed of all other refugee crises that were to come after this one when I wrote this chapter. When I read archival documents like the JDC conference, transcript, which I quoted here, that was written in 1920. <clears throat> and these kind of documents which foresee the Holocaust and a future of one mass refugee crisis after the next, with which we are still living today, I would feel so much emotion while sitting in the archives. And in my preface, I talk about grappling with my emotions in the archives whenever I'd think about how, most, how almost all of the recipients of aid in my story, and especially the children, were murdered a decade later and ponder the futility of it all. And yet, I think this story is important to know. I don't think many people know of the Great War as the original creator both of mo mass modern refugeedom and of the first international responses to such mass refugeedom. But it was. And Jewish refugees were a major group within this, at over a million people, and a major player in the international humanitarian response probably the most important non-state actors in that era. The significance of the Great War for getting the modern issues of statelessness and refugeedom going, the reality of mass Jewish trauma well before the Holocaust without any Nazis required to cause it, and the impossibility that any NGO could effectively ameliorate this kind of trauma despite impressive attempts, I think are major points I make across my book that one can see through this particular excerpt. I also thought the, that my idea of the emergency department as an analogy um, 
what I would call the A&E, if I were using British English in my book, speaks to the way in which this kind of emergency became so routinized in the interwar period, such that maybe by the time World War II began, it might already not have been understood as an emergency anymore. So that's my book. I'll be doing a full book launch for you all in January, which we'll be letting you know more about. On to the next person.